Welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Serpent and wow do I have so much information for you today in regards to what is going on and what is happening. Strap yourselves in, get that seatbelt on, I'm going to take you on a journey. So we kick off with Ripple 6 to documents from 15 offshore exchanges that it says it could be fatal to the SEC's charges. Now we know that all exchanges have had communication with the SEC. Generally, what occurs is the um, the exchange, before listing a coin, goes to the, SD, uh, the SEC and says, hey, are there any concerns that we should have about listing this coin? Do you have any problem with it? Because we would rather not have it showcased to our, to our community just in case you go then and attack it or go after it. Now, what's interesting is that the SEC, apparently, didn't say no and didn't say yes when it comes to Ripple, Ripple's XRP. Now, that's what they say. Well, Ripple is looking to get the actual internal documents of the precise conversations that they've had. Now, you get one line wrong, SEC, in those documents once Ripple gets their hands on those documents and this thing is done. Finish, kaput, see you later. I get one of my 2021 goals, which is jumping on Google, typing in Ripple versus SEC, and seeing a big, fat, settled, or Ripple wins. That's what I'm looking forward to. There's another thing that I'm looking forward to. If you know the answer to that one, put it in the comments. I've been, I've been telling you guys for a while now what the number two is. Now, what's been going on as well is that uh, in the marketplace, CNBC has been talking a lot about a Ripple, but the CEO has complained saying, hey, don't talk to us like as Ripple, talk to us as XRP. So the, um, Brad Gallinghouse has made an official complaint to CNBC saying, hey, quit saying the word Ripple, go for XRP, that's the appropriate word, and CNBC have taken that on board and they will be switching their language the way that they speak about it. Now, there is gonna be a lot of talk today about charts and what is going on and what can we expect and there's a lot There's a lot happening right now and you know more news that has come out from uh, uh, well, you know, your our favorite crypto friend Elon has been talking again um, And I'll explain what that's done how that's made the movement and what we can expect from that as well But let's kick off with um, Another piece of news and that is these are the 50 exchanges that will be Distributing out flare token. So if you see them here if you're you if you had ripple XRP in December as of December 10 2020 then any one of these exchanges will automatically give you the Flare token. Now, there will be more videos coming out about the Flare token and what it does and how it's, uh, how it's beneficial. All I can say is, if you haven't already, please start to do your own research on it. It's really, 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 really important, super valuable, and extremely, extremely good token, which will be so important to the entire Ripple ecosystem. So if you haven't, make sure you do because it is going to be phenomenal. So those are the exchanges there. I thought I, want, I wanted to mention that. Now, there are rumors and talks about, you know, the charts are looking so good when it comes from a rule run perspective that we will get to five. Now, I can understand, you know, the gentleman that, that will remain anonymous in regards to how they did this. I wish the world of trading and cryptocurrency was a straight line. Everyone would be in it. You know, it's not going to be like this. And we'll go over the charts today go over what that looks like, what can we expect, what's going to happen, and where are the opportunities. But it's never going to just be, you wake up one day and a straight arrow has occurred. I mean, maybe perhaps when the SEC news happens, but there will be a cool off from that and there will be you know sideways um, consolidation and then keep moving forward. So it's really, really important to acknowledge that. Now, not one, but two new countries have come out. So we know France and the digital euro is looking to implement and use XRP. Now, Egypt's largest bank starts using ripples for cross-border payments with a UAE currency exchange firm. So that's Egypt has come on board now with the news coming out that that's what they're going to be doing. And Brazil. So Brazil Central Bank announces CBDC plan one year after meeting Ripple. So it's taken a year, but they're finally coming on board. So one by one, they're all starting to come out. The news just keeps getting better and better for Ripple. I think it's a, you know, it's a, 
Oh, here, here, here's the irony. I think it's a ripple effect that is happening right now uh, with all this momentum and all this news coming out, even though Ripple is currently under SEC investigation. You know, you got Europe, you got Brazil now, um, you got Egypt, you know, they're all starting to come out saying, hey, you know, like it's time. The time has come to for us to, to move with the times and continue to push forward. Now, the other thing was, and I found this pretty interesting, but back in 2018, this particular article came out and it says Ripple's Ripple is or XRP is Bitcoin 2.0. It's like Bitcoin on steroids. And obviously this came out during the euphoria of 2018 when it elevated all its way to $3.30. But back in this article, there are some interesting points that it was made, you know, Ripple was a game changer, XRP versus Bitcoin and Swift. So there was a lot, a lot of momentum talking about it back then. And, and you know, 2018 now seems such, such a long time ago. But the points made in this article back then are very, very relevant. But I want to know in your comments, do you think Ripple uh, will one day beat Bitcoin? Uh, do, you, do you see Bitcoin as number one forever? Uh, do you think that there will come a day where either XRP or someone else will overtake? I'd love to know. I love your commu uh, the community's participation on this. Uh, it's always fascinating to hear what your thoughts are. Share it in the comments because I really, really want to know more about how you feel. Um, XRP is still following the trend line. So, you know, this particular yellow trend line there has been followed and we'll go over that as well. And the other big news is that triple8tnw.com, which is Flair's NFT marketplace, is live. So it is, it, well, it's about to go live, but essentially this particular website has gone live saying, you know, triple8tnw.com, it's the NFT uh, business of the Flare network. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. So much you can see on this website. So triple8tnw.com, and you can see what's going on, the innovation, the drops that are going to be happening, um, and everything about it. And obviously as well, from a transaction fee, is absolutely no comparison of the Ripple Flare network's uh, um uh, well, capabilities and, and, and charges compared to anything else. You know, we're talking about carbon emission 1% versus Ethereum, minting costs under a dollar, and transactions thousands per, per second, all possible on the Flare network. And like I said, please do your own research. I'm not a financial advisor. It is not financial advice, but I, I strongly encourage you to learn more about Flare because the last thing that I want is for you to get Flare in your exchange going, huh, I don't even know what this is. I'm just going to flip it and buy something else and find out that it's a huge, huge mistake. And I, as always, I always want you, you know, to be well prepared um, and well educated on everything that's going on. But I think the website looks fantastic and it is going to be um, a phenomenal addition to the Ripple uh, Ripple ecosystem, and it will definitely be something that we speak about a lot more throughout the channel. Let's jump into Atani. Let's see what the charts are telling us. All right, so we are inside Atani right now. This is on the daily chart. So on the daily chart, the MACD, which is the blue line versus the orange line, is in a bullish trend. The RSI is sitting sort of towards the bottom, which means that there is plenty, 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 plenty more to come. So heaps and heaps more to go. Now, I want to show you what's happened in the last couple of hours with Elon being Elon. So Elon came out, made a tweet, and we literally went from, uh, where were we? We were at uh, four, and we've now gone back down to 95 cents. So we're outside of the Bollinger Band, and we are in the oversold on the RSI. How long will that continue? Not 100% sure. Generally with um, Elon news, it generally lasts about 12, sometimes even 24 hours. So it'll be interesting to see. On the four hour, we have dropped to under. So we have dropped to under the, the MACD, so me, me, meaning that it is a bearish signal. On the 12 hour, they're about to cross, but not really, not just yet. And then if we look on the daily, it is still on a bullish trend. So how much can we take from Elon? How much will that impact over the next couple of hours and, and over the next 24 hours? Not sure yet, but he's at it again and it has impacted the charts and, and obviously, that is something that just reading charts alone, you wouldn't have picked up. So that's why it's important to read the charts, read the indicators, follow the news, read the white papers, follow the, the founders, understand what is going on. These are all very important element, critical parts of trading. You got to know everything about everything. There's, not, there's no such thing as too much information. Let's jump into some drawings. Let's see what they tell us. All right. So we're back in and now let's have a look at what, what we can expect. So 
something, a movement that we're looking for right now is, you know, we, we've clearly um, crossed a particular a trend line. We broke that trend line and now we're heading towards, you know, going higher and higher. And now because of the 98 cents, 95 cents that we just reached, I think, you know, we are set up very well ready for a $1.40 move. The key here is we are waiting for a break above 110. You know, like somewhere around 110 is really, really where we're looking for. Like, and I really want to emphasize that. And it will probably be a break, then retrace, and then go off. That's that's how that's how it, it will probably happen. A more realistic view on timelines and what we're going to do and how we're going to do it is there is also the possibility that we could trend down. If we break 90, we will probably hit 79 cents. So look out for that. Then go up and move towards $1.25, retrace a little bit, maybe touch $1 one more time, and then go off. And then we would go to $1.45, retest it, and then $2.80 and beyond. Maybe retest to $1.60, potentially, before we go off into, into the sunset, as they say. This is the scenario. Another scenario could be that we just simply, from here, bounce to $1.30, back down to 110, go off to 220, trend sideways for a little bit in around the sort of window of $1.70 to, um, to, do, to do $2.10, $2.20, and then have that break towards 330 and beyond. So nothing changes from a, from a timeline point of view, from um, hitting, the, hitting the 330 and then really kicking off the, uh, the bull run. We've got Egypt, we've got Europe, We've now have Brazil. The news just keeps piling on, piling on, piling on. Do your research. Learn as much as you can. It's a fascinating world that we live in, in the crypto world. If you did learn something new today, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. As always, thank you. And I look forward to see you on the next one.